so so yesterday we have finished the um, the phylum annelida and we have seen the some general characteristics of the phylum annelida so today we'll see the what are the different examples of the phylum annelida in that so today we will uh, start the animal that is earthworm okay so this topic is very important because the the phylum annelida has shown a very significant changes in the evolution process and we have seen so many uh, interesting features that has that is started from the phylum annelida and the earthworm is a very typical example to understand the various uh, system level of organization so uh, earthworm is very very important so so in neat point of view uh, there is a definite question from the type study of earthworm and as well as the you know you will get a long answer question in the ipe and even in the practicals you know there is a definite uh, 6 to 8 marks from the uh, type study of earthworm so i request everyone to have a keen interest to understand the earthworm so when we uh, study type study of uh, earthworm we see both in morphological features morphological features and anatomical features anatomical features okay. anatomical features so when we study the structures and you know, we structure both morphologically and anatomically morphological morphologically means you no know, external features whereas anatomical means internal features and we also study the functions of a different systems okay in earthworm we have two important genera that is peritema peritema species and the lumbricus so this is another species these two species are important indian earthworms And as we know that the earthworm shows metameric segmentation. So the body is so the body is divided into segments both externally and internally also. We will see how this entire the segmentation was aligned in their body. And these are the group of animals, as we told, the analytics or the group of animals are showing a peculiar character of the metamorphism. Okay. And they have a segments, metamorphs are 100 to 120. Not less than 100, not more than 120. Uh, depending on the varieties, you know, depending on the species, they have 100 to 120 metamorphs in their body and they are the triploblastic which means the body is developed from three germ layers that is ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm and they are coelomates. So the body wall and gut is filled with the, the coelom, that is coelom, and the fluid filled in the coelom is we call it as coelomic fluid. Now let us see the external features, that is morphological structures.
So L2 ohm, so we study morphological structures in three different types, that is from the dorsal view. This is dorsal view. It has the opening, which is called as mouth, followed by the segments. So let me draw this four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. The first segment, so which is having an opening we call it as mouth. So above the mouth there is an extension, extension structure which is called as prostromium. So the first segment which is having a mouth opening we call it as peristromium. There is a mouth, so above the mouth there is an extension, the muscular structure that is called prostromium and this prostromium acts like a sensory organ. So above the mouth there is a muscular structure which is called as prostromium which is act like a sensory organ. Now, see if you see, uh, for example, this is one segment and this is another segment. So these segments we call it as metomeres. Metomer. The segments or metomeres which is dividing that we call as septum. So each segment are divided by a septum. If you see, uh, from 13 to 16, the segments are metomeres are covered by a dense layer which is called as clitellum. And this clitellum is very important in the fertilization process. If you see, there is a line of central dorsal line, we call it as There will be line, we can also see and this line will not be visible in the clitellum region and this line we call it as mid dorsal line. Mid dorsal line. From 12th segment, 12th metomere, 
and not in the clitellum part and the posterior all over the body okay up to in in the middle of the dorsal region there is a opening called dorsal pole so whenever this earthworms are irritated the silomic fluid oozes out from this dorsal pores okay so it is present from 12 to all over the body we can't see in the clitellum region okay so it is from the 12th segment to the end of the body posterior side in the middle of the median of the dorsal side there is a opening called dorsal pore whenever the these worms irritates the silomic fluid comes out and every segment have a circular structure have a circular structure so all over the body we call them as setae 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 so these setae are helpful in the locomotion because they are clitinous clitellum they are made by the clitellum and they are s shaped so all over the it is circular no? it's, it, it's there in the uh, around the worm it is s shaped made with chitin chitin chitinous so chitinous structure and this s shaped chitinous structure embedded in the the skin okay which is responsible for the locomotion and these are setae is present all over the body all over the body except mouth and clitellum and anus so in these segments uh, the setae is not present and remaining all the segments the setae is present setae with the help of ct and the muscular um, muscular layer this uh, earthworm can locomote locomote okay, this is all about the dorsal view now let us see the uh, ventral view so let us see what are the external characters are there in the ventral view dorsal view it will draw same like earthworm So this is ultimately mouth. So mouth has an extension.
call it as dose chromium this is clitellum region around the circular so around the warm it will be there so clitellum on the 14th segment so median ventrally there is an opening called the female genital pore so from this opening the ovaries will come out female genital pore on the 14th segment on 18th segment the peripheral ventral region lateral ventral region there is a one pair of openings which are called the male male genital pores so the on the 14th segment in the central vent central ventral region there is opening which is called the female genital pore and the 18th segment there is a lateral ventral region there is a two openings a one pair of opening which is called as male genital pores in the 17th and 19th there is an extensions so which are called as okay which are called as papillae also called as copulatory copulatory papillae so they are cushions like structures they are helpful for the you no know, uh, sticking with another uh, earthworm when they are undergoing the sexual intercourse so this is a ventral view if you see the uh, lateral view here lateral view there is one important structure that is there uh, in the that is called sperma theca so sperma theca if you see the segments Six, seven, eight, nine. This is five. In the sixth segment, this is a lateral view. If you see, there is a balloon-like structure, and each segment has a one pair of uh, these structures, which is called as sperma theca. So, six, seven, eight, nine. These four segments have this balloon-like structures, which are called as sperma theca. they are having at 6 7 8 9 so in the septum there is an opening so in the septum there is an opening which has called spermato spermato fecal pore these are present at 5 by 6 6 by 7 7 by 8 and 8 by 9 segments nine septums okay the spermatotheca's are present at 6 7 8 9 but their openings are the at the junction of 5 and 6 6 and 7 7 and 8 
and eight and nine. It's very important in the neat aspect too. If they are asking for the pore of the spermatotheca, you have to write for five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, and eight, nine. When they are asking the spermatotheca, and you have to remember, they are available in the six, seven, eight, nine. It's very important. So the dorsal view, we have seen the structures, and the same, uh, this CT also present all over the body except the clitellum and the mouth and anus. So here we have seen the dorsal pores are present from the 12 to end of the body, and we also seen certain uh, the clitellum and all. And here we have seen the genital uh, openings and 14 segment. We have this uh, female genital pore and the 18th we have one pair of male genital pore which produces a sperm in the sexual intercourse. Okay, so this is all about the morphological structures. Morphological structure of the earthworm. Now let us see the digestive system of earthworm. So the digestive system of earthworm is complete digestive system and having extracellular and intracellular nutrition. Digestion. Let me draw this. So in the segment one, there is an opening which is called as mouth okay. and the, above the mouth there is a muscular structure which is called as prostromium and this prostromium works as a sensory organ. Now let us see mouth and different uh, parts in the digestive system and in which segment they are present that is also important the mouth its first segment so from the mouth there is an opening is called as buccal cavity okay. call it as buccal cavity so these are present in first to third segment and this buccal cavity is leads to slightly longer than buccal cavity on the third and fourth segment which is called pharynx this is pharynx and this is buccal cavity so the pharynx is present in third and fourth segment okay. so around the pharynx there are glands these are called the pharyngeal glands
parangeal gland. So these glands produces mucin for the movement of their food and also proteolytic enzymes. So proteolytic enzymes metabolize the proteins. So these enzymes, the mucin and the proteolytic enzymes are produced by the pharyngeal glands and these pharyngeal glands also called as like salivary glands. So from the fourth segment to the eighth segment, there is a slender pipe-like structure which is called as esophagus. This is esophagus. Right here also, esophagus. from 4 to 8, 8 segments. So this esophagus leads to a dense muscular structure which is called as giza. Giza. So giza is highly dense and muscular structure which is uh, helpful for the grinding of the the food. It is there in the eighth and ninth segments, and this gizzard leads to leads to. I will break here because we can't dry, uh, draw the entire headworm here. So, up, consider this is the 14th one. So, 9 to 14, there is a. Uh, this is, this all leads to a narrow pipe. Okay, that is called as stomach. See, remember, this is the 14th segment. From the ninth segment, fourteenth segment, it's a linear stomach, narrow stomach, <coughs> and the fourteenth, fourteen two, all over the body till the posterior end. There is a widened alimentary canal. till the anus and this elementary canal we call it as intestine. So the intestine from 14 segment to end or anus, the intestine and if you see in the 25th segment, for example, this is a 25th segment. 25th segment. There is a finger-like projection in the intestine. Okay. These are called intestinal Coke, cochlea, intestinal cochlea. This intestinal cochlea produces the amylase. So amylase metabolizes the carbohydrates. Okay, and intestinal cochlea.
a 25th segment. The, in this 25th, there is a uh, the unique structures, a finger-like structures, and these have produced the amylase enzyme, which is responsible for the carbohydrate metabolism. And from the 26th, 26th segment to the till end, 26th to till end in the intestine. If you if we cross section of the intestine, it will be like this. And these projections we call it as triposol. Triposol. So what they do? They extend the area of absorption of the intestine, like microvilli of the higher animals. So in the earthworm, the intestine is molds inside to enhance the area of the absorption. This triposol is present from 26 to the end. Triposol is present to 26 to segment to the before the anus. Okay. All the segments are having this. So the absorption is takes place in the intestine. Now these earthworms, they are detritious. Detritious because they feed on partially uh, degraded mat materials and they excrete you know, the powerful nitrogenous nitrogenous and carbon containing organic matter nitrous carbon containing organic matter organic matter we call it as cas wormy cas since they are worms we call it as wormy cas so because the Earthworms are burier, burier in the nature, so they hallow the soil, so the plants will get uh, good aeration and also with the help of this animal di uh, earthworm digestion, the soil also get fertilized because of the, the excre excrete what, what is uh, coming from the earthworm, so highly nutritious to the plants and also thus increases the soil fertility. And not only increases soil fertility, it also improves the soil texture. So that's the reason earthworms are considered as the friends of farmers. Okay. So why it is considered? Because they are they um, hollow the soil and they improve the fertility and they improve the texture of the soil. So that is the reason they help the farmers. Okay. So earthworms are uh, very important in the formation of the vomi compost uh, in, from the improve, improvement of the fertility of the soil. So this is all about the digestive system. Tomorrow we will see the circulatory system of the earthworms.